Dishonored is a game defined by its freedom of choice. In the broad sense, these choices come in the form of pivotal moments in the story, in which the player will be presented with a task and have a variety of ways in which to approach that task. This extends to the player exploration and combat encounters, wherein it's much the same, except instead of those choices being defined by a writer's predetermined decisions, they're instead determined by the powers and abilities chosen by the player, or in fact, lack thereof, as you'll never be stuck due to a missing power, apart from that one time in the void. <sighs> okay, see now I need to stop because my heart's like beating and I want to cry. Previously on this series I've looked at the swords and ranged weapons. Today I'll be covering all of the powers and abilities, from agility to wind blast, including all of the upgrades and any variations brought about by the DLC. Blink for example. The first power bestowed upon Corvo by his fairy goth mother. In its basic form, Blink allows Corvo to instantly travel over short distances in the blink of an eye, and the upgraded version increases that distance significantly. The version of Blink utilised by Dowd in the DLC differs from Corvo's in one major way. That being that once Blink is initiated, time will stop, until you have chosen your destination and released which significantly impacts the way that you'll use this power, as well as somewhat affecting the usefulness of bend time. Speaking of which, the bend time ability allows you to slow down time in its base form, or stop it completely once it's upgraded. The versatility of this ability means <laughs> The versatility of this ability means that you can go from simply just sneaking past your foes with ease to catching bullets mid-air. Or you can always leave the bullet where it is, walk over to the man that fired it, and use possession to Possession is one of the more unique powers in the game, since it allows you to temporarily possess animals in its base form, and humans once it's upgraded. This power has a variety of applications, from allowing access to otherwise inaccessible areas, or setting up elaborate assassinations, though in order to purchase any of these extravagant abilities, you'll need runes, and to get runes, you'll need to speak to a severed heart. The Heart while it's technically not a power, it is a tool gifted to Corvo by the Outsider, which will allow him to discover hidden runes and bone charms that expand your arsenal of powers and enhancements. The heart is possibly the most gruesome piece of equipment you'll find our protagonist carrying, being a severed human heart imbued with a combination of dark magic and cold mechanical workings in order to contain a soul of your beloved fallen empress. When you are near, my heart is at peace to whom you speak and receive information about your mission, as well as extra context on the people involved. My mind's eye is fancy trim and velvet, fresh and young. I think the little words are sad in romance. Next let's talk about dark vision. It's essentially wall hacks that allows you to see enemy locations as well as highlighting loot and traps once upgraded. I would personally not recommend using it as I find it removes a lot of the challenge, although newcomers might find it useful in helping to plan an approach or finding every last piece of loot. Dowd has his own variation of dark vision called Void Gaze, which differs slightly in that before it's upgraded, you can see the locations of runes and bone charms within a certain radius acting as a replacement for the heart. Once the upgrade has been purchased, it acts more like dark vision does, allowing you to see enemies through walls, as well as loot and traps. As you navigate the streets of Dunwall, you'll no doubt bear witness to the swarms of ravenous rats roaming about. These swarms will devour corpses, attack anything on sight, and can be a general pain in the ass which is why it's so sweet once you get the ability to summon a horde of little rat buddies for yourself. The base version of Devour and Swarm is capable of taking out maybe one or two City Watch guards, or distracting a whole load more, with the upgraded version basically doubling the amount of rats summoned and the carnage that they can cause. 
Vitality increases your health, and the upgrade increases the health regeneration rate, as well as the amount regenerated. It can be an important power that helps you survive more intense combat encounters. Bloodthirsty is an ability that rewards players for taking a more aggressive approach. Every time you successfully defeat an enemy, you gain adrenaline, which gradually builds up over time. Once your adrenaline meter is full, you can trigger a brutal kill animation, which if used correctly, can allow you to take down multiple enemies in one clean sweep. Agility is a must-have enhancement, as it essentially allows you to double jump, and the upgrade increases movement speed significantly. Combining this with your fully upgraded blink will have you navigating the streets of Dunwall with ease. Now for Wind Blast. When used, this power unleashes a formidable burst of wind in front of the player. It's an extremely disruptive power that will no doubt alert enemies to your location, so it's ideal for a more aggressive playthrough. Once leveled up, it can deal fatal blows providing your target hits a solid object. Bro, just fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bro got obliterated. The Shadow Kill ability causes the bodies of defeated enemies to disintegrate into ash, providing that they are unaware of your presence. This ability is particularly helpful when trying to stay in the shadows, as it allows you to dispatch your enemies one by one without the risk of bodies being discovered, as the ash fades away on its own. Once upgraded, the power of Shadow Kill only grows, since it now turns all enemies fallen by your hand to ash, regardless of if they've seen you or not. This next power first appears in the Knife of Dunwall DLC, and allows you to summon an assassin to aid you in combat. With Tier 1, Dowd can summon a Novice Assassin, and with Tier 2 you will summon a Master Assassin, which is considerably stronger, striking harder and faster compared to their counterparts. Summon Assassin is made all the more powerful by the Arcane Bond ability, with the first level allowing your summoned allies to utilise your Blink and Vitality, with level 2 allowing them to access Pull, Bend Time, and Shadow Kill. And finally we have Pull. The reason I left it for the end is Arcane did the same. Assassins can be seen using this power as far back as the very first level in the base game, yet the player doesn't get to use it until the final piece of Dishonored's DLC, the Brigmore Witches. Pull is essentially just telekinesis, and its implementation is mechanically sound and fun to use. The power is useful for grabbing faraway objects or foes once it's upgraded. And that concludes my comprehensive look at all of the powers and abilities in the first Dishonored game. If you liked, then like, and thank you for watching.